Emma, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you? Absolutely fantastic. It, it, it's so fun to be able to sit down and have conversations with other creative people. I mean, are you the same t- uh, type of student? Uh, I'm sorry, what'd you say? Are you the same type of student? In other words, if you when you when you get with another creative person, it's almost like, oh my God, they speak my street. Yeah, honestly, it's it's incredible, especially like being a college student who also does music, um, just collabing and talking with other artists. You think, oh, my gosh, they speak the same language that I am, you know? Yeah, because it's it's such a journey that so many of us do not understand. We just know that we keep answering the call every morning. We go, you know, we open our eyes. Yeah, very true. Being with John Legend, you talk about a guy that's opened up his eyes. Oh, my God. What is it like to be in that moment? Honestly, it's insane. Um, working with John, it's it's like a whole nother ball game that I've never experienced before just because he's so well-rounded with music. Like he knows anything about everything and he knows exactly what you, like what your strengths are, what your weaknesses are, what you need to work on. It's it's incredible. One, one of the things in, in studying him and watching him and listening to him, it's, it's almost like it's th- this generation, this is what it must have felt like when Marvin Gaye was here. When, 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 you know, even the early days of Quincy Jones, because, but John is not afraid of anything. He steps forward and says, let me show you the way. Yeah, it's insane. I, I loved how, especially watching now back, Uh, What he worked on with me and what he's working on with my other um, teammates, you know, he knows exactly what they need to hear at that exact moment. And the way that he phrases his um, like his advice and his wisdom, it makes complete sense to whoever's listening to it. What is that like for you when John has other students? And and let me let me bring this forward in a way that in radio, there's usually there's usually five people that a program director takes care of. And, And you do have those moments of jealousy when somebody's getting more attention. How do you keep your story straight and say, ah, that's not my moment. He's working with them. Um, I probably only had to deal with something similar to that during the battles, um, Mm -hmm. because whenever you're in battles, you're working with a battle partner and whenever you're going in, you hear like, you know, John's there to work with both of you, but you know, sometimes the spotlight isn't always on you at that moment. And he's trying to be fair to everybody and give everybody the exact attention that they need. Um, so it wasn't like too hard for me to deal with that during battles, just because I know that John equally wanted to help my battle partner and I out in different ways. And we both wanted to accept his wisdom and his advice in any way that we could take it. Yeah. As creative people, as well as vocalists, you and I have to, we have to follow a strict plan of discipline in the way of protecting the music maker. How are you doing that in this, in this day and age since you're out there now? Um, you know, it's, it's definitely something that I've never experienced before, you know, being on the voice, all of the social media stuff, you know, taking care of your voice. There's a lot of like aspects that goes into it. Um, I definitely think also mental health is a big benefactor in it. Um, because you know, you're out there for me, I was out there by myself at the age of 18. I was turning 19 while I was out there. So Being away from home for such a long time was hard, but then I had to learn that this was my time to really work on myself and focus on myself, not only, you know, vocally, but also mentally as well. Let's take that self because a lot of listeners will go, oh, that's being selfish. That is not true. A creative person has got to be able to talk to the inner soul of creativity. And and that, that's the reason why I do my, my morning pages when I write and I do a defrag journal. Do you find yourself, you, you've got to make that connection to that creative self, do you not? Yeah, I mean, I'm also a songwriter as well, so I kind of have to, you know, daily check in with myself and think, where am I at today? Where do I feel? Like, what am I feeling today? You know, just like every morning taking that time to self-reflect and think, okay, this is where I'm at today. This is what I want to accomplish today. How am I going to, like be the best version of myself and keep improving myself to feel even better by tomorrow. You know, I'm, I'm so glad you brought that up because you you, you took me right back to an interview uh, that, that, that I listened to with Taylor Swift over the weekend. She says, these people judge me by my songs. All I'm doing is I'm thinking of, of what if this person was with me? What if I experienced this? And, and it's not I am, it's what if. Very true, yeah, because you know, as an artist, you can say all day, I am, I am, but that's a very like, 
you know, that's a current feeling. Um, and we, as humans, we change all the time. So I love the whole perspective in songwriting. Like, what if this happened? What if, you know, this thing took place? Um, because you can just think of all the different possibilities of what you could tell a story about. Mm -hmm. Here, here's one thing that a lot of people do not understand about those that use their vocals as a tool is that we, we, we've got to be coached. And, and I mean, even after 43 th years of radio, I still go get coached at, in, in, you know, by, by people that have done the job and stuff like that. How important is it to you to have that vocal coach? It's extremely important to me. Um, I've taken private classical vocal lessons since the age of six. So I'm, I'm still like a huge firm believer of that you can always be learning. Mm -hmm. It doesn't always have to be from the same person. Like for me, I had my one voice teacher ever since the age of six. And then I went on to the governor's school for high school and I learned from two other vocal coaches. And, you know, you also work with vocal coaches and your actual coach at the voice. So you're getting bunches of different information and perspectives from different people. But whenever you hear those different perspectives, you get to try out a different perspective of your voice, like a different side of your voice, which I know that I appreciate a lot because that makes your voice, you know, able to do whatever you want to say. Oh, my God. You said governor's school. My granddaughter did governor's school in North Carolina last year. And, and, and oh, th really? this is a former introvert girl that has become a blossom. And, and it's just that, that people don't understand when you do that and you get that opportunity. Did you not grow in huge ways? It was, yeah, I mean, it, kind of like going back to what you were saying in the beginning, you're surrounded by all these creative people, not only vocalists, but, you know, dancers and artists and visual yes. artists and writers, and you're just immersed in this, you know, creative, like, world, and you're living amongst each other. It's it's truly like a different um, experience that I think that anybody who wants to, you know, delve into their art, find their voice, find out who they really want to be, and their creative process, I think that that is a great opportunity for yeah, anybody. Yeah, and it's something that you don't sign up for. It's it, it's those that are teaching you and have been guiding you that sit there and put your name on the list, and, and you're just lucky enough to be on it. Exactly, yeah. Wow. It's insane. Okay, one of the things that really inspires me about you, Emma, is the fact that you've got opera on on as as a success. I mean, I I my life changed with opera because of Charlotte Church. What I mean, it, you've you've got to keep focused on on opera. I love opera. Yeah, it's it's honestly, it's kind of like I talked about on the voice. It is such an amazing foundation that people look at it and be like, "Oh, well, you know, that's stuff that they sing in, you know, big concert halls and you know, I just want to hear what's on the radio, but People also don't realize that a lot of the people that they hear on the radio, their roots are classical. Mm -hmm. You know, that's where we all started out. That's how you get your proper, healthy training from. I mean, I at least that's where I know that I got mine. And that's the arena that sparked my interest in music and my interest in voice. And that's where I found my voice. And it, it was only later on to where I thought, how can I... How can I develop that? How can, how can I share to others that, you know, this training actually changes your life? Mm -hmm. Eddie Van Halen said, I'm not doing anything different. This is exactly what Bach and Beethoven did. I'm not doing anything different. Exactly. Yes, I love that. Well, see, and that's what I love about music is it, it's the transition of music growing forward. So then how do you participate with that process, Emma? So for me, it's, it's huge to still, you know, practice that classical training. Um, I'm currently a sophomore in college, so I'm still, you know, involved with the classical world. I still, you know, keep in touch with my vocal coach, my vocal teachers. And I think it was only about four years ago to where I thought, okay, you know, I've, I feel like I've learned a good bit. I've mastered a good bit of my classical voice. I wonder what my contemporary voice can do as well. Um, so especially whenever I was at The Voice, I was singing every day. I was working with vocal coaches who acknowledged my classical side, but they were also saying we need to, you know, sometimes break down that perfection that you try to achieve whenever you have, you know, a classical voice. And how can you apply that to, you know, this contemporary piece, this modern song? Um, so it's, it's an extraordinary process to go through. You're in Lyman, South Carolina. This is going to go over Bill's head. This is going to go over anybody else around the nation. Okay, I got to ask you very personally. Are you a tiger or a gamecock? 
I'm a game cop. Ah! <laughs> you guys had a yeah. good weekend, didn't you? <laughs> uh, my, my dad is a huge Gamecocks fan. Um, if we ever wear anything orange in the house, it is like strictly forbidden. <laughs> <laughs> you know, one, one of the things that inspires me about you is that you understand the art of performance. So many people uh, will, will get on to, you know, a, 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 a singing show like this and they haven't experienced the, the journey. And I mean, my God, you know, you sing at breweries, you sing, you sing at student showcases. I have to ask you, are you the rebirth of Dave Matthews? Because that man put in the hours when it came to being out there where real people are. Oh, my gosh. I love Dave Matthews. I'm so glad you brought that up. Um, I mean, it, it's kind of like you said. Um, throughout my journey, I've done and experienced so many different types of performance that I just feel like I have gotten this very well-rounded perspective of what performance is to me and you know what you know game time is for me how what I feel whenever I walk onto that stage and you know having all this experience it really helped me whenever it was time to set foot on the voice stage because I've gotten so many people that I've talked to like Emma you didn't look like nervous at all during your blind audition it's because I was and I wasn't in a way mm -hmm. um I wasn't just because you know after you know, singing with full orchestras and singing at ball games and doing all these different kinds of things. After a while, you get, you know, comfortable in your own performance presence. It's like you walk on that stage and you just switch that nerve part of your mind off and you're like, this is go time. This is the moment. But then the other part of me was nervous because I was like, oh my gosh, these coaches do not look real at all. <laughs> these are like holograms in front of me. Um, so, you know, it is it's just really your perspective and um all of that so. man walking out on that stage those seconds before you physically walk out there is probably one of my favorite places because it, it's a form of innocence but at the same at, at the same time it has to be confidence you've got to be able to take that next step where people begin to see you exactly I, yes that's exactly how I felt um it was very it was like you said like a moment of just like in a sense, self-reflection, thinking about, okay, this is where I'm at today. I have worked hard for this. You know, I've put in the hours, I've put in the wet, or the, the, um, the sweat, the tears, all that good stuff. And then you just walk on that stage and you think, okay, I hope that whatever the coaches are looking for, I hope that I am that. I hope that they acknowledge that. How do you learn to trust that? And, and the reason why is because inside our own hearts, we have our visions, but you've got to be able to relinquish that control into the hands of those that have lived it. It's it's definitely, it was hard at first because, I mean, even growing up, you know, you go to auditions and performances and all this kind of stuff, and you work hard for the things that you perform for, and at some points you can think, oh, well, you know, maybe I could have done better. Maybe I could have done this. Um, but I feel like the older that I've gotten, I have began to trust myself more. I begin to trust the universe more. And yeah. I think, okay, well, you know, I am the best version of myself today. I am the best. I'm in the best version of the song, the best help with this song. And I feel like truly I am proud of myself for how hard I worked for this. And I'm really hoping that this will be, you know, what the coaches are looking for, what the coaches will be proud to have on their team. And if they're not, then that's no burden against me um, because I worked my hardest. And that means that this opportunity wasn't for me. But that doesn't mean that after this, there won't be another opportunity waiting for me. As a creative person, and you know that you plant songs in people's heads, I, I always feel like that as a regular listener of music and stuff like that, that I owe creative people some sort of royalty when I wake up in the morning and I'm singing their song. And it's like, it's like oh my God, without this person, I, I owe them something. How can people give back to you? Because my God, you, Emma, you give so much to listeners. <laughs> that's so sweet um i'm trying to think honestly i've talked about this uh before with other people it's just the uproar of support and love that i've received it's it's insane not only from you know immediate friends and family but also you know local support from the town that i've grown up in i've also received messages from people you know all the way in canada like it's it's been a nationwide 
you know, uproar of love and, you know, the, the best way for people to give back and to appreciate and love the artists that they, that they appreciate is, you know, send them, send them a message, uh, post about them, share their music, share, you know, any posts that they may, you can write them a post. Um, because seriously, I, I do read every single post that somebody writes or every comment somebody makes. And, Every single little one of those things just comes to show me and prove to me that, you know, somebody's acknowledging the hard work that I'm putting in and that at the end of the day, it's worth it. Well, let's let's talk about Blue Executive. Let, let's share that forward, because pe- I mean, there could be some people that do not understand what that, that you really do have a band back there. <laughs> well, um, the Blue Executive kind of isn't a thing anymore. Um, <laughs> we broke up about oh, like no. a yeah, about a year ago, just because of um, personal reasons, some people felt like it wasn't, you know, in their journey to continue in the band, but that hasn't stopped me from working with bands. I still, um, I'm writing music. I'm still working with smaller bands within the studio that I work with. Um, so that's what I really like about the studio that I work with is that we have our showcases about two times a year. And whatever song that we get, whether it be original songs or cover songs, where um, we put a band together within the the studio and then we get to work with them and perform that song. So I still have the opportunity to work with bands. So see, I I love that. I love that. And and creative people that are listening, that are hiding in their bedrooms, playing their guitars and things like that, need to understand that you can build your, your performance. You don't have to go create a band in order to find success. Just find those around you do in the moment and then, and then grow from it. Exactly. Yeah. You, um, you have to start somewhere, you know, whether it be with somebody that you met at school or, you know, if you wanted to find a local studio or somebody that takes lessons where you take lessons at, like you want to say you're a pianist and you found another pianist and you guys wanted to start like a little piano duo, you know, that could be the start of something great. You just have to let your creativity flow and to be confident in what skills you offer and find somebody that has skills that match yours and complement yours. Yeah. All right. You're here in the Carolinas. You know, barbecue is our big thing here in the Carolinas. Are you vinegar based or are you tomato based? Vinegar based. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my best friend works at a barbecue place, and they're um, vinegar-based, so I can't turn back. From oh, that. my God. I, I love it that every town here in the Carolinas, man, everybody brags about their, their barbecue, and it's like you just you just want to go from town to town to town to find out what, what is your secret. Exactly. It's every place is different. Every place is so full of love and goodness. I love it. It is. It is love, isn't it? I mean, when, 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 they, when they bring out their barbecue, there's passion in that. Oh yeah, one hundred percent. I know a, um, I know a barbecuist, uh, and I think it's Central South Carolina. Yeah, <clears throat> he used to go to our church, and I remember one time he brought us some brisket that he had made. Oh my, God. Oh, my gosh! When I tell you that <laughs> melted in my mouth, I was like, man, what did you put in this? <laughs> and it's it's just it's love and it's time and. I think that really applies to anything, like any craft. You're so right about that. Emma, you got to come back to this show anytime in the future. The door is always going to be open for you. Awesome. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. You be brilliant today and go Gamecocks, all right? Go Gamecocks. <laughs> <laughs> Bye.